In the previous lecture, we calculated the Fourier transform of unit step signal and in this lecture, I will give you one very important and powerful method to calculate the Fourier transform. But this method is mainly used when the given signal is related to step or related to ramp or related to both step and ramp. This method is very useful. The method is useful because it reduces the calculations and the complexity of the problem. So first I will give you the rough idea of the method and then we will solve two examples to understand it in a much better way. According to the method whenever we have a signal which is the combination of ramp signals, combination of ramp signals or combination of step signals or combination of both ramp and step signals then we will first differentiate the given waveform and we will differentiate it n number of times till we get the waveform which is combination of only impulses so we will try to get the waveform which is the combination of only impulses or we can say it will have only impulses and once we have this waveform we can easily obtain the Fourier transform within three or four steps the number of times we need to perform the differentiation depends on the type of signal for example if we are having a signal which is the combination of ramps then we will differentiate it one time and after differentiating it one time we will have this signal which is the combination of only steps we will differentiate it one more time and after this we will have the waveform which is combination of only impulses so in case of signal having only ramps we need to differentiate two times and in case of the signal which is having only steps we need to differentiate only one time but if we have a signal which is combination of both ramp and step then the method will change a little and we will understand the change in the method in the example lecture when we will take such signal and I will put the link of that lecture in the description and now we will solve the two examples to understand the method of differentiation in a better way and the two examples are the standard signals the first one is the signum function and the second one is the unit step signal we have already calculated the Fourier transform of signum function we know its Fourier transform is equal to 2 over j omega let's say signum function is equal to the time domain signal xt and its Fourier transform 2 over j omega is equal to the Fourier transform x j omega or simply x omega so these are the notations we are using for the Fourier transform and the time domain signal. Now I will show you how easily you can calculate the Fourier transform of signum function using the method of differentiation. For this we will differentiate signum function one time. We will differentiate it only one time because here we are having the combination of step signals. So we will obtain the derivative of signum function and we already know how to perform the differentiation of the given waveform we will follow the flow of the signal from minus infinity to t equal to zero the signal waveform is having the flow like this it is equal to minus one which is a constant value and therefore the slope is equal to zero so from minus infinity to zero dxt over dt which is also the slope of the signal xt which is signum function is equal to zero so we will have the waveform like this after that when t is equal to zero the flow of the signal is like this and you can see it is a straight line which is making 90 degree from the time axis in anti-clockwise direction this means the slope is equal to infinity and the infinity slope we represent using the impulse signal and the area or the strength of the impulse signal will be equal to the discontinuity we are having here and the discontinuity is equal to 2 1 minus minus 1 is equal to 2 
so the strength of the signal is equal to 2 we are having the positive sign here because there is upward level switching you can see the arrow it is upward therefore we have the positive sign here after that if we follow the flow of the signal again the signal value is constant at 1 therefore the slope is equal to 0 and we will have 0 dxt over dt from 0 to infinity so this is the waveform of dxt over dt and you can see in the waveform we are having only one impulse signal present at t equal to 0 so from here we can easily obtain the Fourier transform of the signum function let's see what is the process dxt over dt is equal to 2 multiplied to delta t minus 0 2 is the strength and the impulse is present at t equal to 0 so we can write the derivative of xt equal to 2 times delta t now we will take Fourier transform on both the sides Fourier transform of signal xt is equal to x omega so x omega but here we are performing the differentiation of xt one time therefore from the property of differentiation in time we will multiply j omega to x omega so this is what we have on the left hand side and on the right hand side we will have 2 multiplied to 1 delta t is having the Fourier transform equal to 1 therefore we have 2 multiplied to 1 and now I will divide both the sides by j omega so we have x omega on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have 2 over j omega x omega was the Fourier transform of signum function and we have found it to be 2 over j omega which is correct so you can see the process is very easy we have easily obtained the Fourier transform of signum function and if you compare the lecture in which we calculated the Fourier transform of signum function the whole process was complicated and time consuming but here we have calculated the Fourier transform very easily and in very less amount of time so this is all for the first example and now we will move to the second example this example is important because we will understand one very important point related to this method using this example and in the last lecture we calculated the Fourier transform of unit step signal and we found the Fourier transform of ut is equal to 1 over j omega plus pi multiplied to delta omega let's say ut is equal to time domain signal xt and its Fourier transform is equal to x omega we will differentiate ut one time to get dxt over dt and we will follow the same steps we will start from minus infinity and we can see that ut is equal to 0 from minus infinity to 0 so the signal value is constant and therefore the slope is equal to 0 so we will have dxt over dt equal to 0 from minus infinity to 0 like this when t is equal to 0 there is upward level switching and the discontinuity is equal to 1 minus 0 this means 1 so we will have an impulse present at t equal to 0 with strength equal to 1 after this signal value is again constant equal to 1 from 0 to infinity and the slope of this line is equal to 0 so again we will have the waveform like this so this is the final waveform of dxt over dd and now we will obtain the Fourier transform following this method dxt over dt is equal to 1 multiplied to delta t minus 0 or we can write dxt over dt is equal to delta t I will perform the Fourier transform on both the sides we will have j omega multiplied to x omega equal to 1 from here we are getting x omega equal to 1 over j omega but we calculated the Fourier transform equal to 1 over j omega plus pi delta omega 
So where is pi delta omega? What is the problem? The problem is we have not considered the DC value. In this case, the DC value was equal to zero. The DC value or the average value is equal to zero because one, one plus minus one divided by two, one plus minus one is equal to zero. So we have zero divided by two or simply DC value is equal to zero. And the Fourier transform of DC value equal to zero is equal to zero. Therefore, we did not include the Fourier transform equal to zero in this Fourier transform. If you add zero here, you will get two over j omega, which is the same result. But in this case, the DC value is not equal to zero. The DC value is equal to one plus zero divided by two, which is equal to one over two. And the Fourier transform of DC value equal to one over two is equal to two pi multiplied to one over two, which is the DC value itself multiplied to delta omega. Two and two will cancel out. So we have pi delta omega. So this should be added to the Fourier transform we have obtained from here. So finally, we are going to get x omega equal to one over j omega plus pi delta omega, pi delta omega. So in this way, we have the correct Fourier transform. Now I will explain what actually happened after taking the derivative of xt. xt was having the DC value equal to half. And when you take the derivative of any DC value, it becomes zero. So in this plot, the DC value is equal to zero because after differentiation, it became zero. But in original signal whose Fourier transform we are calculating is having the DC value equal to one by two. So always check DC value first, whether it is equal to zero or not. If it is zero, then there is no need to include it along with the Fourier transform you are getting after differentiation. But if it is non-zero, then you first calculate the Fourier transform of the non-zero DC value and then add it to the Fourier transform you are having after differentiation.